solar system formed, they redefined what, planet, what, what Pluto was. So Pluto, Pluto is no longer a planet in their eyes simply because they redefined it as not a planet. It's not that it's not a planet anymore. They simply redefined it because they found more planets outside the solar system like Pluto. And if they had to include all these other planets outside of Pluto, it would have completely screwed up their ideas of how the, how the solar system was formed. Because these, these objects outside of the Kepler belt, or the Kuiper belt actually, uh, do not conform like Pluto does to the so-called accretion disk theory. The accretion disk theory is the theory that forms, that they say forms, is the formation of the solar system. And it does not, it does not fit. And so, instead of saying, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe our theory is wrong. They simply said, ignore that part over there, just take, simply take the part that agrees with our theory, and this is what's right. Everything else outside is wrong, and ignore it. They try to do this, and they oh, yeah, they're convinced. They were convinced that they were right on this. So with their bravado, they launched a mission to Pluto called New Horizons. And ironically enough, Unlike the mission to Mars, where everyone's here, oh yeah, the mission to Mars, 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 and everyone's freaking out about the mission to Mars. The mission to Pluto was well publicized up until the point it got to the planet. The theory of Pluto says it's not a planet. It's not properly sphere. It's pro not properly spherical. It uh, doesn't have an atmosphere. Or it just doesn't appear to have an atmosphere. It's simply a chunk of ice. And so they classify it as a moon or a satellite. The first images from the spacecraft show up at NASA. The image, they're excited to see the images, initially. Within 48 hours of the initial publication, of, in the, in the initial outing of the, of the information, they're just trying to show this in real time. And this is why NASA really does things in real time anymore. They always try to sort of give yourself a barrier so in case something negative pops up, they want to hide it and, you know, oh, that never happened! That's what happened with New Horizons. And that's also when, the, the, you know, there's an atmospheric explorer around um, Mars called Maven that nobody's heard about. And there's a good reason why they've never heard about it. And I'll tell you about that this after, her, after New Horizons, the mission to Pluto. what they see? Spherical planet with an atmosphere. Something they were convinced didn't exist. So the mission... New Horizons went away. They seem to talk talking about it. There was another project called Maven, which looked at the Martian atmosphere to determine what happened to the Martian atmosphere. And everybody's theory was, well, CO two global warming. You know, you know the Martian, Mar the Mars atmosphere is an example of what you have when you have runaway CO two, global warming. This is, a this, this is a result of that. This is our warning that we need to take care of our planet. Maven shows up. It wasn't CO2 that stripped away the atmosphere. 
it was solar activity on the sun. And they actually have photographic evidence of this, of, of, of what the solar activity does as far out as, Mar as Mars. How it affects the atmosphere. That Project Maven has been, sh has been not been shelved, but it's been pushed aside. No one's talking about it anymore. The excitement's gone. And this is the ignorance of science. This is the ignorance of, of the religion of science. That refuses to see what the research is. And only accepts ideas like this, this, this young wet between the ears kid. Uh, this is atheism. They only see what they want to see. If something does not fit in with their view of the world, it's wrong, and they can dismiss it and ignore it. And yet they call, and I know, <laughs> ironically enough, the definition of ignorance is to ignore something. That's why ignorance is ignore. The root word of ignorance is ignore. You can't be ignorant if you're if you're not ignoring something. If you don't know something, right? If you don't know something, then you're not ignorant. You simply don't know it. It's a lack of knowledge. But if you know something, if you can have the capacity to know something, and you ignore it, you turn your head away and say, I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to ignore it. You're ignorant. And this is Neil deGrasse Tyson. This is most, most of these people who support atheism are ignorant. Because they choose not to see the science that actually supports, hey, there may be a God. And that, that they, the thing is, again, they only look at the the... the the Western Christian version of God, which is 50, which began in fifteen hundred eighty, there are thousands of other types of theologies out there. Examine, do some research. They have done nothing but dismiss. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this here for now because I do have to go food shopping and I am exhausted. But uh, we'll see what happens. About uh, in about a half hour, I'm gonna end up going out and uh, do some food shopping. Uh, I'll see you then. All right, take it easy. Uh, alrighty, it is 11.02, yeah, 11.02 a.m. It is 11 hours and 2 minutes into the day of Saturday, April 23rd, 2016. Although, from the research that I've been doing, I'm still very much in a heavy thought mode, so maybe this uh, walk up here, the parapetetic session I'm going to do now is going to do me some good because it will allow me to, to mull over a lot of things I've been thinking about, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the research. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention in the last segment is that there's an assumption that the Earth is only 4,000 years old or 6,000 years old or something like that. They've got a, a biblical date set for how old the Earth is. And this is based on the fundamental understanding of the Bible. Well, not so fundamental. The fundamental understanding of the Bible uh, Basically understood and uh, emerged in 1800 year, uh, 1800 AD, 1800 years after Christ, and they decided that the Bible, these scholars decide the Bible is not real; it's a mythical book because, well, it was never put together by Christ to begin with. Well, no, and the other thing is that uh, you're being told that this was a, a, a Christ thing or, or God's word. Because of people who had a view 1,500 years ago. And of all that 1,800 years ago... No, 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 people 500 years ago decided that the Bible was the ultimate truth. And that's the way it, the way it worked. Uh, then, not even 200 years later, well, two, three hundred years later... They decided that, well, you can't question the gospel, you can't question the Bible, everything in there is absolutely true, this is the word of God, this is what he teaches. Although if you read the life of Christ, you actually go into the gospel and basically read the life of Christ, he's always talking about mercy. 
But the thing is, they also ignore the fact that uh, the Bible was written uh, 300 years ago. It was actually assembled. Not 300 years ago. This is where my mind is going off. 300 A.D. is when it was written, put together. And it was actually rewritten. It wasn't uh, written at the time in terms of when it's, it was, wasn't, wasn't one single book. It was a variety of manuscripts. And they, they, what they did is they brought these manuscripts together. These manuscripts happen to be in Greek. Why? Because, well, look at the Rosetta Stone. Uh, go and do a little bit of research on Rosetta Stone. You will find at that particular period of time that Greek was the common language, the way English is today. And so, while you had a variety of texts around you from a variety of different languages, the primary texts also were all, all in Greek. So, you just say, well, you had, uh, you had uh, the languages on the Rosetta Stone, including Greek, and this is how they were able to figure out uh, a lot of a reason why we know or sort of have an understanding of what uh, uh, the Egyptian hieroglyphs said. is because they, they found Greek writings. This is what the whole Rosetta Stone was about. It was about seeing the, the Egyptian, the, the hieroglyph the, the, in the cuneiform, together with the Greek, and they were able to figure out what, what was being said on the walls in, in the Egyptian hieroglyphs. And this is what fatigue does. You knock your knock your mind out. It makes you really tired, and it's hard thinking. Well, speaking actually, I'm thinking no problem. It's the, it's coming out. It's coming out of my mouth is the problem. Um, the same thing with the weed, and this is why when they did the research and and, and give you pause for thought. And they found the Dead Sea Scrolls to their shock and amazement. The Dead Sea Scrolls weren't written in Hebrew, they were written in Aramaic. Yeah. Matter of fact, they really haven't found, archaeologically speaking, any Hebrew writing. They know that the Aramaic was there, they know the Greek was there, they know Syriac was there, they know the ancient languages were there, but they really haven't been able to find Hebrew yet archaeologically speaking. And it's from the archaeology that we can say, okay, that we get enough evidence in archaeology to say, yep, Christ was real. So there is enough evidence to say that Christ was real. The thing is, is our timeline is off because, again, we're viewing things through a European lens. And in terms of the fundamental Christians, you're viewing it through an American lens. It's the, the, the American fundamentalism didn't begin to the 18th to the 1800s, it's 1800 years after Christ. They're the ones who talk about the fundamentals of you know. They're the ones talking about creationism. Well, they don't even understand the Greek. If you don't understand the Greek, the original language that the, 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 the Bible was written in, how are you going to understand uh, what the Bible's saying? And the thing is, Neil deGrasse Tyson and all these, these critics of the gospel, including Richard Dawson, they don't know the Greek. Have they gone and lived in Greece to see what what the culture is like and how how done done a cultural anthropological study to see how the cultures of Greece and the Middle East are interconnected and how they are ancient and that the the practices just the way today in China you go to the Chinese they have ancient practices you, you live in any Asian neighborhood their ancient culture is still there the Greeks were the same way until the Europeans came in. And then you have to dig because, again, what happens, Europeans come in and they whitewash everything. So the, the information that you want isn't the immediate information. It's the background. It's the information that they're not showing you. You have to go outside the textbook in order to find the information. But again, most of these atheists are, 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 are stuck with their Bibles, their, their science textbooks, and they refuse to go outside the authorized texts. As long as the science is authorized, there you go. That's their belief, that's their saints, that's their religion. And that's their Bible. And they stick to it with their guns, like their people on the right, because the uh, atheists will not will, will go and tell you we have to go and correct the world, we have to create regime change, we have to, you know, to do this thing better. And in order, the way to the only way to do regime change, in order to improve the world, the social engineering, we have to burn the old structure down and 
tear it down and build it, burn it down and build a new one out of the ashes. Go read Marxism. Go read uh, the uh, Fabian Society. Go read the, the, this whole concept of reconstructing, reflecting. Go look at uh, Bill Ayers or, 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 or go in the, search into the, the background of uh, Obama. See what he believes. Burning the old structure down and building a new one in place. This is the social atheist re-engineering of society to a better society. This is progress. This is why you see Obama bombing Syria. This is why you see Obama back bombing Iraq. This is why he's in Afghanistan. This is why he's made an entire mess out of Africa. I mean, how many people are talking about uh, Boko Haram in, in, in Nigeria? Nobody. Why? Because it's, it's an American project. This is Obama's baby. And the Clintons also have their hands all over the stuff, too. You know, she was, you know, statesman. She's the Secretary of State. She understands foreign diplomacy. She understands foreign policy. I mean, look at how, look at how good Benghazi went, right? <laughs> look at Libya. Libya was Hillary Clinton's foreign policy baby. That turned out real well. Same thing with the Arab Spring. That was her baby, too. Anyways, uh... <laughs> I gotta pack up. I'm not going yet. I gotta put the ice packs in and put my back on. And I don't need to put the heavy jacket on now because it's uh, warm outside. Well, relatively warm. It's sunny outside. It's about uh, 45 degrees. It should go up higher. But uh, last time I walked like this, uh, it was more than enough. It was fine. Uh, so, same thing. Walks are hard. They they do represent a difficulty. But they're also enjoyable. I said when you do the research like this and you see the various different things, and I said, I've done more of the background research into Hillary Clinton, more into the geopolitics of foreign policy. The psychological behaviors and sort of see what's going on. How, uh, together with Hillary Clinton and uh, Bill Clinton and George Soros uh, and Obama, they have turned the United States into a police state. This is actually one of the reasons why I'm walking, is I realized this was happening, uh, beginning to happen more around, around the time Clinton was coming up. Bill Clinton, the uh, initial seeds for the uh, American state uh, was being formed, and I realized that the United States was slowly starting to become the uh, sort of the mirror reflection of uh, the United Socialist uh, States of America. So now we have the USSA, and uh, this has formed my protest as uh, getting rid of some of my documents. This got me arrested and put in jail for a bit. I am one of those activists who've been in jail uh, for fi fighting for freedom and the system. I saw all that's happening now, including what's happening with the police uh, and the way they've become so militarized. I saw this happening back in 1995. And uh, by 2000, uh, I had been put in jail and uh, the beginning part of my work to do the further research has uh, began at that point in time. Anyways, uh, uh, I'm going to go now and I will talk to you when I come back. And uh, see you then. I'm back. And this segment is going to be rather short because the uh, memory card is almost full. So... That will put a uh, damper on the uh, 
the sky's in here. But I didn't get much anyways. I got, you know, just the necessities and because I am, I did the work that did the, the amount of uh, uh, shopping that I did over the last few weeks. I'm now caught up and I now have a distributed load, a significantly distributed load uh, as compared to before. So yay for that, I've successfully distributed my load. The next task is to, uh, and no sweating, it was nice outside, the shoes worked very well, the uh, $5, the $6 shoes worked very well. Uh, the next task uh, for me will be to uh, manage my costs. See what happens is when you go out, oops, <laughs> I didn't have the camera follow me. When you go out, I'm just going to take this up, when you go out and do food shopping, there's a tendency to spend and control and not control what you, you spend. This is a standard nor, normal tendency. Say, well, I haven't bought much, so no harm, no foul, right? Because you see you don't have that much in your bag. So your tendency is to push the amount again. Not too much, but because you remember you're not going to get the big large things, but uh, enough to let it, it uh, it's substantial. So what ends up happening is you end up spending more than you intend to spend. So I have a limit, and this is going to be a little bit unbelievable, but I have a limit of, of just $40 a month, or $40 a week. So that means I should be spending just $20 every time I go out, right? Every time I go food shopping, I'm spending $20. That's what should be happening. I mean, I did that limit today, but in the prior, the in the in the shopping uh, the shopping day prior, I didn't do that. I wasn't thinking about how I've split the day up. I was just thinking, well, you know, I haven't spent that much. I can spend a little bit more. That was the thought. Unfortunately, when you do that, your the amount you spend goes significantly and then just organizing things over where your intentions are. And that was certainly the case, that was certainly the case this sort of last time I was out. That was certainly the case. So my expenditures for the week went beyond the $40 limit. But I remembered that today uh, uh, and stayed within the uh, $20 limit. So I was happy for that. I was happy that I was able to stay within the $20 limit. That there wasn't any particular issue, so uh, yeah, yay for that. And I'm still going over things in the, my mind, the, the things I worked on yesterday and last night and this morning. Uh, I'm still rolling them over my mind, uh, but uh, it's cleared things up for me a little bit. Part of the problem was sometimes you get inundated with the information and you feel overwhelmed in the there's no direction further to go. And this is what happens. When the days I don't vlog, when there's massive, a good amount of gaps in the vlog, those are the days I'm struggling with the information. I'm stuck, and I don't know which direction to go in next. 
And that's where these walks, these the, the peripatetics, the thought while walking, the philosophy while walking, this is where it helps. You sit, you go out, you think, you mull. And then when you come back, maybe, and usually for me, I've got several options out. Now to sit down and try them out. Anyways, I will see you in the next segment of the uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS vlog. Uh, I'll give you a time and date stamp before I forget. Uh, it is 12 hours and 45 minutes into the day of Saturday, April 23rd, 2016. Alrighty, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.